Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Justin Peters. I hope that you and your family are doing well today. I want to thank you so much for joining me for this podcast. This is the latest installment on my series entitled, Why Are Charismatics So Weird? Now, I want to show you some clips from a from an episode of the Sid Roth program entitled, It's Supernatural. And we're going to go back a little ways. This is that back to 2011, so over a little bit over a decade ago. But Sid Roth is talking to a guest, the particular guest he has on this show, and his name is Bruce Allen. Bruce Allen claims to be able to translate and not translate a language, no, be physically translated from one location to another. Can a man walk through a door and find himself in another part of the world? My guest was taught the secrets of supernatural travel and how you can do this too. Next on this edition of It's Supernatural. Now, when I first saw that, my, I thought, this looks like The Twilight Show. Those of you old enough to remember that show, um, it very, has very much of a Twilight Show aura to it. But uh, notice that Sid Rawls sets this up. Uh, he's going to introduce his guest who can translate, go from one spot to the next, sometimes all the way around the world, or at least halfway around the world. And uh, you can do it, too. I have Bruce Allen here who has been commissioned by God to teach you about what the Bible refers to as translation. What is translation, Bruce? I said translation has a number of nuances to the meaning, but uh, as far as the Christian is concerned, it could speak of being caught away in the spirit in the, the realm of heaven where we understand God to be, and then it also speaks of a transportation, a geographic shift from one location to another supernaturally. For instance, uh, example of the first one, let's say, uh, you're uh, driving a car and it takes X number of hours to get to a place and you get there shorter where time is literally compressed. Give me an example of that's how that's happened in your life. I grew up in a little town outside of Seattle called Edmonds, Washington, right on the beach. And from Edmonds, Washington to Spokane, Washington is about five and a half hour drive. On a good day, if you're really pressing four and a half, that, and there's no traffic for that, because you're going over mountain passes. And the Lord had been challenging me about whether an individual could be translated by faith. And so when I finally came to the conclusion, this is the word of the Lord, I said, yes, sir, I believe so, and I'm ready for my first lesson. So I prayed over the car that morning with my friend, and we began to drive from Edmonds to Spokane. And I remember every turn in the road, every exit, we stopped for lunch as we normally do, and we did that trip in less than two hours. Less than two hours, and how long should it have taken? Five and a half hours. Five and a half hours. Now, that's my kind of transportation. Pretty impressive. Go from Edmonds, Washington to Spokane, Washington in just a couple hours, a trip that's normally five, five and a half hours. That's that's pretty impressive, but it's uh, it's nothing compared to this. As far as understanding and revelation of how this is doable and how it operates, as well as experiential in seeing these things take place. Tell me about Richard from Kenya. I have a, a friend named Joe, he's also from Kenya, and I had heard a story about a gentleman named Richard who had had an experience of geographic translocation or transportation. And so I asked Joe, I said, is this true? He said, oh, I know this Richard, he's my friend. And this is the story. Richard one day was told by God, he said, I want you to go to another country. He said, I have something I want you to do there. And this man in his uh, excitement and zeal, packed his suitcase, went to the airport, and when he got to the airport, he set his suitcase down, and he said, now what do I do, Lord? Because I have no money and I have no passport. The Lord said, go into the men's room. Go into the third stall on your left. And he did that, and he said, now what, Lord? He said, worship me. So this man, Richard, lifted his hands to heaven and began to worship the Lord. And after a few minutes of time, 
the Lord said, okay, now pick up your suitcase and go. And when he walked out of that men's room, he was in the airport in Paris. Just out of curiosity, do you know how he got back? No, I never did ask, as a matter of fact. <laughs> well, did you hear that? He had no passport, he had no money, and he goes into the restroom and he walks. Again, that's my way to travel. So God told this guy to go into the men's room, walk into a bathroom, and come out in France. Really? Honestly. Honestly, folks. This is lunacy. This is absolute lunacy. But every single guest that Sid Roth has on his program, the whole premise of the show is to tell you that whatever his guest experiences, you can experience too. You can do the same things too. You don't feel like getting on an airplane if you've got an international trip planned? Hey, no worries. Just walk into the men's room or women's room, or I guess nowadays, whatever you particularly feel like that day, um, walk into the bathroom, just go into a public bathroom, walk in and walk out in a completely different country, whatever country you want to be in. Yeah, seems reasonable. And how do you do this? You say, I mean, I don't know how to do that. Every time I walk into a bathroom, I just come out of the same bathroom in the same place. Ah, you, to know how to do it, you see, you've got to buy the tapes. Call now and receive both Bruce Allen's awesome book, Gazing Into Glory, plus his anointed audio CD teaching, Translation by Faith. Yours for a donation of $25. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9088. In this book, through testimonies, experiences, and the scriptures, Bruce will teach you step by step how to see into the realm of the Spirit, experience God's glory in a new and powerful way. The whole focus of the book is to provoke and activate God's people to walk in those very things. Not only seeing in the realm of the Spirit, but being able to take hold of the word by faith and translate or transport geographically or spiritually. And we've seen whole groups caught away in the spirit. On this audio CD teaching, Bruce shares his own experiences of translation by faith. Through listening to this teaching, your own experiences of translation will be activated. I believe when you listen to this CD and you read this book, the same anointing that Bruce has accessed by faith and received a mantle to teach you by faith is going to jump on you. Don't miss out on getting both Bruce Allen's awesome book, Gazing Into Glory, plus his anointed audio CD teaching, Translation by Faith, yours for a donation of $25. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9088. Call or you can write to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. Post Office Box 1918, Brunswick, Georgia 31521. Please specify offer number 9088 or log on to SidRoth.org. So for the low, low price of $25, you can learn how to translate to skip the line, skip the traffic. Don't worry about rush hour. Want to go to another country? Hey, no worries. You can do it instantly. Just buy the DVD and the CD and all that stuff. 25 bucks. Of course, this was 11 years ago. It's gone up now. The, all the, the stuff that he's, that he hawks now on his website today is uh, $35 usually, but so inflation, you know. All right. Now I want to show you this clip and he makes a very interesting scriptural reference and we'll talk about it. Now you literally received a commission from God and a mantle to teach on transportation. Tell me about that. When I first had that first experience, I sat down for about six months because I was chewing on that and studying the, uh, the Bible and how this could be. And I finally said, Lord, why are you teaching me? Why are you telling me this? He said, I've called you to be a forerunner, to teach my people at the end of the age how to do this by faith, because it will be necessary. Uh, we'll get back to that in a little while, but uh, you teach on these subjects of transportation at churches, and entire churches are having these. Tell me the most people that have participated as you've been teaching on this at one congregation and what happened? This was a large home meeting in a, a, a home in Singapore and we had 85 people there. And after we taught on this, I was told by the, the pastors that had invited us that 85 of those people, which was the, all of them, including the children, had an experience where they were caught up into the third heaven, the realm of God, and had experiences that changed their lives drastically. 
Ah, caught up into the third heaven. Does that ring a bell with you? If it does, there's good reason for that because that is a reference to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 4. So let's read this, shall we? Paul writes, It is necessary to boast, though it is not profitable, but I will go on to visions and revelations of the Lord. These are true visions and true revelations, by the way. Paul continues, I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body, I do not know, or out of the body, I do not know, God knows, such a man was caught up to the third heaven. And I know how such a man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I do not know, God knows, was caught up into paradise and heard inexpressible words which a man is not permitted to speak. Of whom was the Apostle Paul speaking here, this man who was caught up into the third heaven? He was speaking of himself. He was the man who was caught up into the third heaven. And you may be wondering, why does he refer to himself in the third person? Why doesn't he use the first person like we would normally do? The reason he referred to himself in the third person is because that is how humbled he was by what he had experienced. Paul had been caught up to the third heaven, and that is heaven, heaven. Basically, the the first heaven, um, the atmosphere, the air that we breathe, the second heaven, stars and space, planets and all that. And then the third heaven is the abode of God, is heaven, heaven, with a capital H, proper heaven. Paul had been caught up to the third heaven. And he says that this happened. He said, I don't even know if I was in my body or out of the body. I do not know. God knows. But he said he heard words that are inexpressible that man is not permitted to speak. He is so humbled by what he had experienced that he would not even refer to himself in the first person. He referred to himself in the third person. You see, friends, Paul did not even want to talk about this in the first place. This rapturous, this magnanimous privilege that he had been given to be caught up into the abode of God. And he didn't even want to talk about it, but his apostolic authority was being questioned by some false apostles back in Corinth and trying to turn the church of Corinth against him. And it had gone on for so long, and you kind of get the sense that Paul had just, he had just about had enough. And he, paraphrasing here, is like, you question my apostolic authority? You question whether or not I'm an apostle. You question whether or not I love you. I know a man. I know a man who was caught up into the third heaven. He was referring to himself. And notice too, what do we know about what Paul saw or heard in heaven? We have no idea what he saw. We have no idea what he heard. Because he said he heard words that are inexpressible that man is not permitted to speak. Dear friends, think about that. This is the Apostle Paul. This is the man who wrote at least 13 books in the New Testament. If he was not allowed to tell us what he saw and heard in heaven, don't believe anybody else when they say, Oh, I've been to heaven. Let me tell you what I saw. Let me tell you what I heard. And all these people, it seems like about half of the guests, maybe more, that Sid Roth has on his program all claim to have been to heaven. And they can't wait to tell you about everything they saw, everything they heard while they were in heaven. Cat Kerr, Jesse Duplantis. I mean, I mean, there's this on and on and on. There's so many of them, hundreds of these people. It's kind of ironic sometimes. I heard a, so I saw one program of Sid Roth, and he one time said, he said, my guests provoke me to such jealousy because they've all been to heaven and I haven't been to heaven. And I can't remember which episode that was. I wish I could. I could find it and pull it up and play the clip. But he said, my guests just provoke me to jealousy because all my guests have been to heaven and I haven't been. And I'm like, take a clue, Sid. Take a clue. I mean, so you're, you're selling a product to people to teach them how to go to heaven, how to be translated from one place to another, be caught up in third. You're selling a DVD set 
to teach people how to do it, taking their money, giving them this DVD set to t teach them how to do it, and yet it hasn't happened to you? Dude, take a clue. But dear friends, anytime somebody says that they've been to heaven and they want to tell you what they saw, what they heard while they were in heaven, don't you believe it? The Apostle Paul was not allowed to tell us what he saw and heard in heaven. Paul didn't go on a speaking tour telling everybody, regaling everybody with what he saw and heard in heaven. No, he didn't make a career out of what he saw and heard in heaven. He didn't even want to talk about it in the first place. Contrast that level of humility with all these other folks. And they can't wait to tell you about what they saw, what they heard in heaven, how Jesus taught me the warriors dance in heaven. And I went to heaven and uh, there was a talking horse in heaven. And, and uh, I sat in Jesus's lap and Jesus showed me the throne room. Oh, I, oh yeah, another guy, I eavesdropped on conversations between God the Father and God the Son in the throne, or eavesdrops. I mean, just lunacy. And it hasn't even happened to Sid Roth. And yet, he'll sell you their books, he'll sell you their videos or DVDs for $25, $35. He's all too happy to sell you this garbage. It's not, it never even happened to him. It's a charlatan. He's a huckster. Don't ever believe it. There's only three men in the New Testament who were allowed a glimpse into heaven. Stephen, right, Acts chapter 7, right before he was stoned. And then John, the Apostle John, who wrote the book of Revelation, by far the most detailed account we have of heaven given to us by the Apostle John. But that's inspired authoritative scripture. And then the only other one is Paul. And he wasn't allowed to tell us what he saw and heard in heaven. Nobody in the Bible made a career out of going to heaven. Nobody in the Bible made a single red cent off of their vision or trip to heaven. None of the three. But all the guests on Sid Roth, oh yeah, they do. Jesse Duplantis lives in a 35,000 square foot parsonage. He's made a ton of money off his trip to heaven. Don't you believe it? So why are charismatics so weird? Yeah, they're weird. They're also heretical. Most of them, not all, but most of them heretical. And again, this is not the fringe of the charismatic movement. What you see on Sid Roth's program, that's not the fringe. Again, Dr. Michael Brown is one of his good, close, personal friends. He's been friends with him for almost 40 years. So this is not the fringe. This is the mainstream of the charismatic movement. All right, dear ones. Thank you for joining me. Until our next time together, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of his Holy Spirit be with you all.